Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to continue on with our Battle Group Boot Camp. Now previously in our boot camps, we've already gone over the general summary of the game, concepts, dice rolls, measurements, stuff like that. That was the first video. Then we talked about the turn, the turn order, issuing orders. That was our second video. Then we had a video where we discussed movement, showed how many movement inches you had, how far you could move, terrain effects on your movement. The next videos, we had two videos about firing. We had open fire small arms suppression and we had open fire small arms direct fire. And in today's video, I'm going to it's going to be a short addendum or addition to the direct fire rules which is called Infantry Weapons of World War II and we're going to talk about rifles, machine guns, mortars, flamethrowers. All right, so the Infantry Weapons of World War II. Be, there is a section of the rules that uh, I've been saving for this video, which talks about the infantry weapons of World War II. And this is kind of in a general broad spectrum. Uh, it's only two pages. There's about 20 different items here, maybe less than that, maybe about 15 different items. And these are explained in greater detail in your theater campaign books like your D-Day book or your Walk Down Rhine or your Market Garden books. Whichever book you get will actually talk about the specific weapons used in those battles. But you also, also need to know the general rules be, or the general weapons of World War II because there's a little bit of an overlap. Okay, I've got some troops out here on the table, mainly just so I can kind of visually explain some of these things. Rifles. Okay, now I've got a infantry team there and I've got an infantry team there. Uh, a couple of these guys in here have rifles and a couple of these guys have rifles. Now, the rifles are things like the Enfield, Mark IV, the M1 Grand, the Mosin Nagant, the Mauser, Car 98. Those were like the standard rifles. And they're all considered rifles. And as such, they have a rate of fire of 1 to a maximum of 30. So basically, they don't di differentiate the type of rifle or the manufacturer of the rifle. They give them all 30 inches and a rate of fire of one. And all infantry, all infantry is considered to have a rifle even if the gun crew or rear echelon supply unit doesn't have them on the model. Like this guy that's kneeling down behind the mortar opening up an ammo crate, he's still considered having a rifle. This bazooka man carrying a bazooka is also considered to have a rifle. Now as an exception to that, if they're equipped with a different weapon like a submachine gun, an MP40 or a Thompson or a BAR uh, or a light machine gun, then they're considered to be carrying that weapon. Okay, now it doesn't mention this here. It mentions it in some other book, but I'm going to mention it here just as a aside. Uh, the the Moisen Nagant, the Car 98, and the Enfield were all bolt action rifles, right? And so, and then the M1 and the Carbine were considered to be. Uh, more advanced because they were semi-automatic rifles, which means 
they could just fire one round per pull of the trigger where they didn't have to cock with the bolt, right? They didn't have to pull the bolt back between every shot. But they're still given a rate of fire of one. And the reasoning or the philosophy, the thought process behind that is, first of all, the American training trained them to take single shots, bang. Not, not just spray an area by pulling the trigger over and over and over. There was no advantage to just, I mean, it was more convenient for the soldier not to have to deal with cocking the bolt, but the, the amount of firepower uh, going out towards the enemy was very close to the same. Uh, the British had a technique where they could fire their Enfield using their pinky while using, they fired the rifle with their pinky while using the other, their forefinger and thumb to pull the, uh, pull the bolt back. So they would pull the bolt back, fire with the pinky, pull, and uh, they could actually have a very high rate of fire that way. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is the Americans, just because they have, just because they have a semi-automatic rifle doesn't mean they should have a rate of fire of two. That would be twice as many bullets and that would be unrealistic. Uh, Okay, so don't get don't get you know your uh, game systems mixed up, and give them a rate of fire of two, or that would be not right. Okay, now the another uh, weapon is the submachine gun. Normally, your squad leaders and your team leaders and your officers might be carrying a submachine gun. Now, submachine guns. Uh, were things like the Thompson, the Sten gun, the PPSH, uh, and the uh, MP38 or the MP40. Uh, and because they're submachine guns and they're firing a, a uh, higher caliber bullet, like maybe a 9mm or a 45, they don't have the same kind of range that a, 30, a 303. Uh, or a 306 would have, right? So uh, basically they have a much shorter range. Their range is only 10 inches uh, as opposed to the 30 inches. Uh, but they do, because they were used in your uh, street fighting, room to room, close assault type weapon, they are given a rate of fire of two if used during a close assault. And the rules on submachine guns are, generally speaking, there should only be one per squad, right? Uh, they say a single infantryman per squad with the appropriately armed model can be equipped with a submachine gun, such as an NCO. Um, I would just, I would put like, um, put it in a team as well. I'd also maybe give, give your officers that, give, give a senior NCOs, they're okay. Um, but that's really a choice of yours because I know a lot of officers that would carry rifles instead. It's really your choice. Okay. Light machine guns. We've got a light machine gun right here. Uh, it's a light squad support weapon. Um, actually, that's not a light machine gun. The light machine gun is this guy right here. He's got the BAR. Uh, I don't have the MG42 out here, but there could have been an MG, uh, an MG42. Uh, light machine guns, or things like the Bren gun, uh, the BAR, the Russian DP, known as the record player. It's the machine gun with the round magazine on the top. 
due to the distinctive... Okay. All light machine guns have a rate of fire of two. So even though they could like put out a ton of lead, uh, a two dice still rep doesn't... Each die doesn't represent one bullet. Okay, so that's another thing you got to get away from. One die of shooting isn't necessarily one bullet. Um, it's just the game's way of determining firepower. Uh, and you get two dice out to a maximum range of the same as a rifle. Uh, it's firing the same type of, like a BAR can still only fire 30 inches. It's just that instead of counting them as one for rate of fire, you count them as two. Same thing with the BA, uh, the Bren guns, the the light MGs, whatever. Okay, now medium machine guns. Okay, me. Okay, medium machine guns like the 1919 30 caliber machine gun, which is this guy right here. This is a light machine, uh, medium machine gun. Uh, It will have a rate of fire of five with a maximum range of 30 or 40, depending on the weapon. And it requires at least two men, like the loader and the gunner. If a single man is left to man it, then its firepower is halved, round down to two. Just like this BAR by himself gets a two, if he's got the machine gun by himself, it'll be a two as well. But that uh, additional man lets that firepower jump to five. So that's a five plus, if that's a rifle, that would be six. So you're looking at six coming out of this base. Where on this base, because that's a submachine gun, he doesn't get to fire over 10 inches. So you're looking at one, two, three, four. So six compared to four. And also there's a possibility, depending on the weapon, it might be able to go out to 40 inches. Okay, there's heavy machine guns, which I don't have on the table. But a heavy machine gun, like a 50 caliber uh, or, the, or the DSHK, uh, were most often used as a heavy anti-aircraft machine gun. So good were they that they both remain in service even to this day. A heavy machine gun, like a 50 cal, has a rate of fire of 6 and a maximum range of 40. Knowing that a 50 cal can shoot well over a mile, uh, 40 inches doesn't seem like very far. But in my game, that equates to, in, well, in, in, in this game, it equates to about 400 meters. But I think that's because tables aren't flat. You have terrain that rolls. A lot of times you'll have hedges and buildings and woods in between. And even if you were playing on a flat table, there would still be hills and bumps. So you don't get to shoot far. Plus, you have to identify your targets before you can shoot at them anyway. Okay, they will require a crew of three. Uh, if fewer crew are left to manage it, like two or one, then its firepower is halved down to three. Okay. Now, you notice how I really didn't talk about the MG34, the MG42. They're special. MG34 is a standard light machine gun of the German army. Uh... It has a rate of fire of five, okay, just like just like the Americans' light machine gun. Maximum range of thirty. It could also be mounted on a tripod for sustained fire. In this case, its rate of fire jumps to seven. So we're looking at a bipod machine gun, like if there was an MG42 in this squad. It would be considered a rate of fire of five in a squad, right? Where like a BAR only has a rate of fire of two. Now, regardless of the mount, the machine gun requires a crew of two to be in full effect. 
if reduced to a single man, it's reduced as half rounded down to two on a bipod or three on a tripod, right? Five halved is two and a half, so that's two. And then a tripod, which is seven halved, becomes a three. Okay, so if this squad, hypothetically, had an MP40 and an MG34, uh, these two guys would be the MG34, because uh, you could use any one of those guys as your assistant, and you would have a rate of fire of five coming out of these guys, and then one from the rifleman at range. Uh, if you get closer, you'll get that extra one, uh, but he would be good for close range. Actually, he could be your assistant, and then, you know, that's how I would manage it. I would say the squad leader was managing, so we'd have a machine gun of five with him, and then two more, so a total of seven. Okay, now the MG42, uh, which almost everybody, almost all the German late war squads have, but it just depends on which army, which army list says. A sur superb weapon, ferocious rate of fire, the MG42 state-of-the-art weapon, entered service in 43, fired from a bipod. It has a rate of fire of 6, so it's basically one better. And then when it's mounted on a tripod, its rate of fire is 8, so that's one better. So instead of 5 to 7, it's 6 and 8. It has a maximum range of 40 inches as well. Regardless of the mount, it requires a crew of 2, same as the 34, and it is halved rounded down. So half of six is three, and half of eight is four. It's pretty obvious. Okay. Now, auto cannons. Light auto cannons, usually with an automated feed, were commonly fielded as anti aircraft weapons mounted on light vehicles. And they were versatile, and sometimes uh, they were used for ground fire. So, 20 millimeter light auto cans are roughly 20 millimeter caliber, fire high explosive tipped rounds, as well as incendiary shells. They have a rate of fire of six, and have a maximum range of 50. An auto cannon can be used for suppressive fire, because it can go full auto using either its rate of fire or its very light HE rating, whichever is best. It is treated as having a rate of fire, and we'll get into that when we start talking about HE, how to shoot somebody with HE. When used for aimed fire against armored vehicles, it can also be used for aimed fire with armor-piercing shells, in which case, treat it like any other armor-piercing shell. And then there's heavier auto cannons like the 37 and the 40. Uh, Germans used a 37, the British and the Americans used a 40. They have incendiary, low rate of fire, but harder hitting impact. They have a rate of fire of 8 and have a maximum range of 50. An auto cannon can be used for suppressive fire. Or it can use its rate of fire or its very light HE rating, whichever is best. It's treated as having a rate of fire of 8 when used for aimed fire against armored vehicles. It can also be used for aimed fire with armor piercing. All of those are pretty much the same. It just changes the rate of fire from 6 to 8. Okay, next one is flamethrowers. As well as dealing with small arms rate of fire, aim fire also covers flamethrowers. Fearsome tools of war, lethal against static targets like bunkers and buildings. Flamethrowers are either man-packed, carried by infantrymen, or vehicle-mounted. A man-packed flamethrower has enough fuel for a single burst. 
So it only has enough fuel for one shot. So once it has been used, it cannot be used again. Now a vehicle mounted flamethrower has its ammunition listed on its profile. Okay, flamethrowers have a rate of fire of 10, and they can only be used against stationary targets, be that a building, a bunker, a static vehicle. If the target moved last turn, then it cannot be targeted by a flamethrower. So if, if you have infantry running across the hedge here, or the fence, and you've got a flamethrower, you cannot shoot them while they're moving. You can only shoot if they are stationary or like a building or a vehicle that did not move. Yeah, that doesn't include infantry that moved into a building. You can still target them because you're targeting the building and everything inside of it, even if the infantry moved into the building because the building is really the target. If used against a static vehicle, you have a random penetration value determined by rolling a D6 and always attack the vehicle's side armor value. A unit hit by a flamethrower always counts as being in the open. So even if you're in a bunker and you get hit with a flamethrower, your save is as if you were in the open. Flamethrowers are fearsome. They have fear effects. The first time an enemy unit is attacked by a flamethrower, then its commander must take a battle counter, whether it kills them or not. This is because the terror of such weapons instill in those a risk of incineration. Light mortars. Okay, we've got medium mortars right there. You got an American paratrooper light mortar right there. Light infantry support weapons of approximately 50 millimeters, approximately, because I think this is a 60. Uh, I think, well, that's an 80, but that's like a 60. The British use something called a two inch, which I think is like a 75. No, wait, that's like a 50. Uh, yeah, they're, they're well, it says 50 millimeter or 2 inch, throwing a small mortar bomb uh, to approximately 500 meters. They have a minimum range of 5 inches and a maximum range of 30. So it's the same as the rifles. They were generally being removed from the order of battle by many units, but many units retained them. They're very light weapons with an HE rating of 3 slash 5, with an armor penetration value of 1. Light mortars cannot use indirect fire. They use direct fire with HE or suppressing fire only. Okay, so what they're saying is the light mortar guys, they don't equip them with radios. They don't tell these guys they don't have a fire direction control unit. They don't have FOs. They don't do any of that. They spot their own shots. They look, they shoot, they fire, they hit them. They count as infantry and can move and fire in the same turn. It's pretty good. So they're kind of like just regular infantry. Just move and shoot or shoot and move or shoot twice or whatever. Okay, medium mortars. That would be the 80 the 80 is considered a medium, the standard battalion support weapon for the fast delivery of high explosives and smoke bombs up to approximately two and a half kilometers. 80 millimeter, 81, 82, and 3 inch all saw wide service throughout the war. They have a minimum range of 10 inches and a maximum range of 90 inches. Uh, on an 8 foot table, that's almost the entire length because I think 8 feet is like 100 and something. So, yeah. Um, they are light weapons, 
with an HE rating of 4 slash 4 plus and an armor piercing value of 2. They count as very light guns for movement and may move and fire in the same turn. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to step back into the movement rules. Movement summary. Very light gun can move off-road 3 inches and on-road 4 inch. That is uh, where infantry like with rifles would move five inches, these guys move on the road one inch slower and off-road two inches slower and may move and fire in the same turn. So they can basically just carry the mortar and still shoot it. Okay, heavy. Now, notice I didn't say anything about direct fire, indir cannot use indirect fire, uh, Medium mortars can use indirect fire, and spotters can be used to call for fire with these guys. Okay, and we'll get into that when we start talking about the artillery rules. Heavy mortars. Uh, yeah, there are some heavy mortars, like the 120 millimeter, the 4.2 inch. Well loved for their fast response and hard hitting impact. The standard 120 the Germans copied theirs from the Russian design, and British 4.2 provided infantry with their heaviest high explosive support before calling upon artillery. With a range of approximately 6 kilometers, they have a minimum range of 15 inches and a maximum range, in bold quotes, 240 inches. That should be across a couple of tables. They are light weapons with HE rating of 6 slash 4 plus. They have an armor piercing value of 3. They count as medium guns for movement. Medium guns can move 1 inch off road or 2 inches on the road. But they may move and fire in the same turn. All right, that was the infantry weapons of World War II, and uh, that's a general generalities. Uh, again, some of these campaign books will actually have more uh, depth or details when it comes to these infantry weapons. So thank you for coming out and checking out this video. In the next video, we're going to start talking about direct fire HE, and then we're going to start talking about direct fire armor piercing. All right, I'll see you in the next video.